The cards you're looking at currently make a really interesting combo. So up here in the upper corner, we have Gutter Snipe, Thermal Alchemist and Firebrand Archer. They have, all have one thing in common. They deal damage to each opponent whenever you do something. In this Firebrand Archer case, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, Firebrand Archer deals one damage to each opponent. It's the same with Gutter Snipe, except that it only deals damage when you cast an instant or sorcery spell. And in the, the, the below corner here, the row, Keen Sense, Curiosity, Ophidian Eye and Tandem Lookout. These cards are enchanted onto creature cards and let you draw a card whenever that enchanted creature deals damage to an opponent. So let's start with casting Firebrand Archer for 2 mana and then casting Keen Sense, enchanting Firebrand Archer with it. So the first thing that happens is that Firebrand Archer will deal 1 damage to each opponent and then Keen Sense attaches. And what we're gonna do now is cast Lotus Petal for zero mana. This means that Firebrand Archer will trigger and deal one damage to each opponent. We're exploiting the fact that in multiplayer games we have several different opponents. So for each opponent you have, you will draw a card. Or actually, you may draw a card because we're actually going to deck ourselves with this. So what actually happened here? So for on turn three, for zero mana with Lotus Petal, we draw three cards if we have three opponents and then we're going to sacrifice Lotus Petal for one black mana to cast Dark Ritual. So what this thing repeats itself, now we're dealing one damage to each opponent from the Firebrand Archer and because of Keen Sense we're drawing cards again. And from the Dark Ritual we basically gain more mana to cast more rituals and then suddenly we're actually storming off and killing all of our opponents manually by a little Firebrand Archer rapid fire gun. Cool, huh? And it's not even that hard to assemble. All you need to get in play is one of the three cards in the top row together with one of the four cards in the bottom row. I might actually go ahead and say that there are more variations to the top row cards, however, I don't find that the other alternatives are that great. So all you actually need is maybe a Gatas Knife and Tandem Lookout. But you can do something really interesting here, because look here, three converted mana cost, three converted mana cost as well. Together that makes six. That means Protean Hawk. Whenever Protein Hawk dies, search a library for a number of creature cards with total coin cost of 6 or less and put them onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library of course. And with Flash, you can Flash Hawk out the Protein Hawk on turn 2 in instant speed and putting both of these two cards in play from your deck. Alright, so what we're going to do now is fill our entire deck with more rituals, as much as humanly possible that we could get hold of, right? Actually, I'm only going to add in 10 rituals, the one you're looking at currently. Lotus Petal, Dark Ritual, Squandered Resources, Carpet of Flowers, we can actually use Carpet of Flowers as a ritual, Dramatic Reversal, Hidden Strings, Battle Human, Desperate Ritual, Cabal Ritual and Energy Tap. Now, if to make this deck actually functional and be able to go through the entire deck, we're gonna need more rituals, right? However, I have an other ID to make this deck function. And that would actually make my deck into a very interesting thing, a combination of both Control and Storm. So let's start with this thing, Submerge. 5 mana instant speed, we're never going to be able to cast that thing. However, if an opponent controls a forest and you control an island, you may play Submerge without paying its mana cost. And what it does is this, put target creature card on top of its owner's library. So what we're actually going to do with this is target a Birds of Paradise or maybe a commander that some of our opponents is controlling to remove it from game. Actually we don't care anything about that, all we want to do is just cast a spell to get the trigger of one of our red creature cards that are pinging for damage to draw more cards and deal damage and continually go through our entire deck. And just to demonstrate that all we want to do is casting more and more spells, so what we do first is cast Submerge, have it on the stack. Now Firebrand Archer triggers and fires a bunch of arrows and you draw 3 cards, but then what you're going to do is keep priority and cast Force of Will. You may pay 1 life and exile a blue card from your hand rather than pay the mana cost of Force of Will and counter target spell and we're actually going to counter our own spell just to cast another spell for zero mana to draw more cards and deal more damage. So let's actually study this. So what we have here is a strategy that involves having a lot of control cards that you're looking at currently to shut down and stop fast combo builds, fast combo attempts, but also cards that are going to function really perfectly when we're doing the storm run. 
So let's take a look at some cards that are a little bit weird, and maybe you've never seen them before. Ravenous Trap. If an opponent had three or more cards put into his or her graveyard from anywhere this turn, you may pay zero rather than pay the cost of this card. Excite all cards from target player's graveyard. This card is extremely good versus Hermit Druid, but also we are going to be putting a lot of cards into our opponent's graveyard with this thing. Peru Genesis, instant speed, 6 mana. You may exile a red card from your hand rather than pay this card's mana cost. Deal 4 damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures. So we can cost this by just exiling a card from our hand. And what we do have is a lot of cards on our hand. And we also have a really interesting card, Spinning Darkness. You may remove the top 3 black cards in your graveyard from the game instead of paying the mana cost. Spinning Darkness deals 3 damage to target non-black creature, and you gain 3 life. Cost 6 mana, we're never paying for that one, but we are going to remove cards inside our graveyard to sheet it out without paying its mana cost. And it's also really good at disrupting something like Kiki Yiki. Whenever Kiki Yiki is trying to win, we can kill it with these two cards right here. We're also going to grab whatever card that we can cost with only Phyrexian mana. Gutshot. Yes, indeed, we're going to be playing Gutshot. Gutshot actually has a bunch of legit targets, like Priest of Titania. Only one toughness, and you can kill it in instant speed with this. I would also like to talk about Engineered Explosives, a really good card at destroying stacks pieces like Arcane Laboratory. But if we're trying to win with the combo run, simply cast Engineered Explosive for zero mana, only to gain the pinging trigger from a rapid fire Egyptian. Now I have a lot more cards inside this deck fulfilling these two criteria, both being a control card, a spot removal that comes into play without paying any mana for it, that also helps out during the storm run, that helps me cast cards repetitively without paying mana for it, to draw more cards to eventually draw my entire deck and win with one of the creatures you saw in the beginning of the video to deal lethal damage manually. In any case, I think by now you understand the core strategy and the philosophy of this deck. So I think it's about time that we start talking about who's in charge of this deck. Now you might have already guessed it, but we are playing Wild Smash to the Face and Thrasios Triton Hero as the commanders for this deck. Now Thrasios Triton Hero is pretty much just really good, we don't really need to talk that much more about him. Wild Smash to the Face, however, is a lot more interesting. Normally, you only play it for the colors, black and red. The Crazy Goblin is actually a perfect boss inside this deck. Because let's take up Spinning Darkness once more. Look up here, that is 6 converted mana cost. Remember, we're not paying for it, we are gonna exiling 3 black cards inside our graveyard instead of paying for this thing. And that means Wild Smasher will actually throw a bomb dealing 6 damage to a random player. And then let's bring this thing back in action. Tandem Lookout, Soulbound. As long as Tandem Lookout is paired with another creature, each of those creatures has. Whenever this creature deals damage to an opponent, draw a card. That means that whenever you're casting a spell, you will cantrip, because Wild Smasher will throw a bomb at someone, and you will draw a card. And then later, when you cast your Firebrand Archer, you can change the Soulbound, so that the blue scout and the red archer is teamed up together instead. So don't hesitate to cast Curiosity on your own commander, the Wild Smasher. You will actually draw cards, and eventually draw other pieces of the combo. It is a lot better than sitting with the cards on your hand and doing nothing. Because Wild Smasher gives you a plan B win condition, like whenever we're casting Ravenous Trap to interrupt one of our opponents, we're dealing 4 damage to one of them. And because Curiosity is enchanted onto Wild Smasher, we will draw a card. Let's also talk about Thrasius. He is quite perfect inside this build, because he draws cards in instant speed. That means that you can sit with the cards in your hand, being ready, and then whenever nothing happens, you activate Thrasius to draw cards and keep digging through your deck. Also, we are going to be playing a lot of artifacts inside this deck that comes into play for less compared to what they produce, like Mox Opal comes into play for zero, but produce one. Monovolt the same, comes into play for one, produce three, soldering, great, chrome, mox, also great. We have a lot of cards in our hand when we're doing the storm run, so in other words, we have definitely no problem at all sacrificing a card for this thing. The same with mox diamond, just discard whatever ten lands you have in your hand. 
and then Mana Crypt as well. Mox Amber is going to be great inside this deck, because all of these artifacts become rituals. They come into play for less compared what, for what they produce. And that means that a card like Hurgle's uh, Recall, that is usually played as a control card, as you can return artifacts to owner's hand, but we can actually do something really cool here. You can target yourself, you can target yourself to return all your artifacts back to your hand that are tapped and then just recasting them. This means that this card becomes both a control card but also a ritual. And I have already mentioned that we are playing Dramatic Reversal. And what is actually great with Dramatic Reversal? Yes, Isochron Scepter. And who is a great commander to play with these two cards? Yes. Tarasius Triton Hero, because he can win with infinite mana. You simply dig through your entire deck, having infinite mana on your hand, and then you cast this thing, Gutter Snipe, and then just keep doing the same thing. Keep on using Isochron Scepter to cast Dramatic Reversal, and now you deal 2 damage each time to all of your opponents, and this will deal infinite amount of damage. But Isochron Scepter also has a lot of control potential inside this deck, due to the fact that we could imprint this thing to control and shut down artifacts permanently for our opponents. But we can also put in Fatal Push to keep on removing mana dogs. But also we could imprint Arcane Denial or maybe Cremate to draw cards repetitively and keep on digging away graveyards. So this deck puts itself together quite nice and it's really fun to play. It can both play the control line using Wild Smasher to go the distance and throw bombs at everyone or try to win in a really fast storm playout. I should go ahead and say that this is not the only way you could build this curiosity combo. You could add in more rituals and decrease the amount of control cards that I'm playing to make the storm more easy and more fast. But you could also change that thing the other way, removing a lot of rituals and adding in more control cards to build a more control strategy. So in the end, there's a lot of different ways that you could build this thing. Also, there's a lot of more red creatures that are offering something like Gutter Snipe, Thermo Alchemist or Firebrand Archer, depending on how you're creating the deck and how you want your version to function. And that is it. I hope this deck will put a smile on at least someone.